this video, we're going to be creating our first Go program. We're going to do the Hello World. Now, if you don't already have the Go programming language installed on your system, go ahead and go over to golang.org and you want to click on this Download Go and then it'll take you right here to the Downloads page and they have a download for Microsoft Windows, Apple Mac OS X, Linux, and then Source. So go ahead and download the appropriate one for your system and then you can proceed with this video. To get started, you just need to open up a text editor or an IDE. The people over at JetBrains were kind enough to give me a free trial license of Goland. So I'm going to be using the JetBrains Goland IDE for this tutorial. But you can use VS Code, Atom, Notepad, Vim, whatever text editor or IDE you want. So go ahead and open that up and let's create a new project. So in Goland, they set up the project for me. I'm just going to go and click on New Project. It's going to be a Go project. And they're going to automatically create the project folder for me. I'm going to call mine Hello World and then click Create. All right, and if we look over here to the left, all they did was inside of the slash go slash src, they created a new directory called hello world. And all the project files that I create are going to end up in this hello world directory. If your IDE didn't create that for you automatically, go ahead and create yourself a directory where your project can live. The first thing I want to do is create a file so that I can write some code. So I'm just going to right click and go new, and I'm going to create a new go file. I want to point out right here, we can name the file whatever we want. We can name it Hello World. We can name it Awesome Program. We can name it anything as long as we put the .go at the end. But typically for an executable file, which is what we're going to be creating, the standard is to name it main.go. So I'm going to use main.go and I'm going to press enter. So I just created my main.go. You can see it over here to the left. And the Goland IDE, since I named my project Hello World, it automatically put this package Hello World at the top of my file. Now, that would be good, but there's two important things when you're creating an executable Go program. There's two pieces, and that is the package has to be called main. So we're gonna change our package to package main. And that lets the Go binary know this is going to be an executable file. The second piece that's required for a Go executable file is a func main. Is the entry point of our executable application. So these two pieces, package main and then func main, func for function, and the main function are required to let the Go compiler know that this is going to be an executable file. Now I said originally we we're going to do a hello world application. So we just want to print hello world on our terminal screen. So let me bring up my terminal. If you don't have a built-in terminal, go ahead and open up the system terminal and navigate to your project directory. Goland did this for me automatically. So when I opened up the terminal inside of Goland, it automatically put me in my project directory. So go ahead and go to your project directory. I'm just going to type ls to show you. I have my main.go file in here. And we have our package main and our func main. And that lets our Go application know that this is going to be an executable file. Now we want to tell it to print hello world out on the screen. In order to do that, we want to go ahead and import a package. And what that package is going to do, it's going to allow us to print to the screen. So I'm going to type import and then fmt. I've heard some people refer to this as the fumpt package. I've heard people refer to this as the format package. I typically call it the FMT package. Whatever you're comfortable with is fine. I think most people will know what you're talking about. So you see I'm getting these little squiggly lines here. And that's because we've imported this package and it's unused. It's an unused import. One of the specific things about Go is it, it doesn't want you to import packages that you're not going to use. 
So until I use this FMT, I'm going to get this little squiggly letting me know you need to use this package or delete it. So let's use the FMT package. So in order to use it, we're going to do FMT and then a period and the GoLand IDE is going to show me all the different things that are available to me in the FMT package. Now for me, I just want to use print LN or print line. So I'm going to click on it and hit enter and now I get this print line. You can type that out if it doesn't automatically populate it for you. So FMT period print LN and now inside of this I'm going to provide it a string. And that string is just going to say hello world. And that should be it. This is all of the code required to print hello world down here in our terminal. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to use command s to save. Now there's two different ways that we could test this out. The first way we're going to go over is go run, the go run command. Now if we type down here in our terminal and I say go run and I'm already in my hello world directory so I can type main.go. So we're saying go run main.go and if I press enter it ran our program for us and you can see it printed hello world out here in the terminal. When we executed the go run main.go command it automatically generates an executable file that's deleted after the program's closed. So when we run this command it creates an executable, it runs it, and then as soon as hello world is printed to the screen that executable is deleted. Because of this some people say Go can be used as a scripting language opposed to a compiled language. The end result has removed all traces of an executable file. Now the second way we can do this is we can actually build the executable file and reuse it. And in order to build the executable file to reuse, if, if our program's completely finished and we're happy with it and we're ready to share it with our friends, we could type go build main.go. And what that's going to do, it's going to create an executable file for us. So go ahead and hit enter. Now it didn't output anything on the screen because we didn't actually run the file. We just created the executable. Let's test that executable out. Now originally when I typed ls, we only had our main.go file in here. So I'm going to type ls again. Now we have our main and main.go. So we just created this main file right here and let's go ahead and, and run it. Now in order to execute our file I'm going to use dot slash and then main. And there we go we just ran our new executable file. And I'm going to type ls again you can see that the main file wasn't deleted like it would have been done if we used go run. So now we have this file called main. If we wanted to, we could even rename this file. So if I wanted to do mv for move main, and I'm going to call it hello world. And if I type ls, now I've just renamed it to hello world. Now if I type dot slash hello world, it should print on the screen this hello world right here. So let's go ahead and enter. And we did. So we just renamed our executable file to hello world and we executed it and we were able to print hello world on the screen. It's pretty cool. Now Go actually has a shortcut or a flag in the Go build. You can actually provide a dash O for output or output file and then specify the name that you want to use for the file that's created. So if we were to say Go build dash O and specify a file name, let's do subscribe now and press enter. Now we should have a file called subscribe now and we do. So let's go ahead and use our dot slash and run our subscribe now program. And there you go. So the better method here would probably be to use the dash o and provide an output file but if you forget to do that and you use the go build main.go, you can always use the move to rename your file. Either way will work. Now you remember earlier in the video we said go knows that this is an executable file because we provided package main and func main. We didn't have to specify in our command 
go build dash O and then the name of the file we want to create. We never had to tell Go to use the main.go file. Go actually went and found the file containing package main and func main and used that file to create the program where we specified the name of subscribe now. So we just created our first Go program and this is how we did it. Now let's just review this again. In order to have an executable Go program, there's two requirements, and that's the package main and the func main. We imported our FMT package. Now, real quick, I just want to demonstrate something. You can import multiple packages, and we could just type import and import another package and import, 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 import. But if there's a bunch of packages we want to import, what we can actually do is put a parenthesis and then list out our packages on different lines. So we could say OS for the OS package. We could say math for the math package. Maybe we want the math RAND. All right, I'm getting a little squigglies because I'm not actually using the package in my program. But if you were going to import multiple packages, you could use this starting parenthesis and ending parenthesis and then on each individual line, list out all the packages you wanted to import for your application. Since we're only using the FMT, I'm gonna get rid of this and we'll just do the FMT. Cool. Now one other thing I wanted to point out is, notice the curly braces on this func main. Depending on the language you're coming from, different languages have different standards. And I've seen some languages will actually put this curly brace on the next line. Now you'll see as soon as I did that, I got the little squiggly mark and it's saying unexpected. It's giving me this error of main missing function body. Now since Go is a compiled language, there's certain expectations when the program is being compiled. And one of the standards that the developers of the language set is that when you're writing a new function, right here we have func main, our parentheses, they've set the standard that this curly brace has to be on the same line as the function. One of the reasons for that is during compilation, the compiler automatically adds a semicolon at the end of each new line. And when the curly brace ends up on a line by itself, it messes up the compilation because it thinks it's starting a new line. So keep in mind, whenever you're creating a new function, this is the way you wanna write it. Specify func, the name of your function, your parentheses, and then always start the curly brace on the same line as your function. If not, you're gonna get this error. Now, just to show you, I'm gonna command S to save, and let's try go run main.go. And we're getting this error here, missing function body, syntax error, unexpected semicolon or new line before the first curly brace. So like I said, the compiler actually put a semicolon right here. We don't see this, this happens during compilation, but it puts a semicolon at the end of each new line, which is why you see this unexpected semicolon or new line before our opening curly brace. So just keep that in mind and don't do it like this. Always put the opening curly brace on the same line as your func main. And just for fun, let's go ahead and let's do hello scripster. All right, I'm gonna save this and we can do go run main.go and there we go hello scripster we've just created our first go project so have some fun with this type in some different things use your go run main.go maybe go build build an executable file you can once you build it you can use it anywhere you could copy it into a new directory you can save it you can give it to friends and when they execute it it'll print out on their screen whatever you told the program to do so hopefully you learned something new in this video. If you haven't already, click the like button, subscribe, hit the little bell icon, and I'll see you in the next video.